on 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 2, number 86. And here we were given a bunch of funky looking box plots and asked to describe them. So before we get into that specific problem, I do want to give you just like a little prep problem. So I, I want to show you the data I put in these lists. And I'm on the app because I'm using my iPad right now for this screencast. But look at L1. I want you to see that there are just five nines in there, right? So the min the Q1, median, Q3, and the max, they're all the number nine. There is no variability in this data set, and that's gonna affect what our box plot looks like. Let me go ahead and make this stat plot. You can see right now I've got my first plot on. It's My data's in L1. I've written every number once, so the frequency is one. I'm on this app, so instead of hitting zoom nine, we actually hit graph. And if you'll look off to the side here, look at that. That is my box plot. It's just one line right? One vertical bar at nine, because again, the min, Q1, median, Q3, and the max are all nine. There's no middle 50% to box out. There's no space between that. So it's just a line. Now I want to compare that to a different data set. So let me show you what's in L2. So here I have one, 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 and then nine. And if we think about how this works, the min's one, Q1 is one, the median is one. Now Q3 is gonna be the average of one and nine, so that's gonna be five, and then the max is gonna be nine. So you can see that in my five number summary, I have one, 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 five, nine. And so I am actually gonna have a little bit of a box here. Let me go ahead and push this or turn this on. All right, now I, you can see in my second plot, I've got L2 against one, and I intentionally made these different colors, purple and red so we could see the difference. I'm gonna hit graph. And now you can see that box, right? Now there's no left tail because over here, the min, Q1, and the median are all one, but there's Q3, there's the max, all right? And then we had our really funky box plot with that data that just had nines in it. So I just want you to see a couple of options. And now let me head over to my notes and let's take a look at 86. Ooh, I have a little note left over, let me delete that. All right, now, when it comes to these three box plots, I wanna start with the US. I think that actually looks similar enough to the one we just graphed. So I can see the median here, right? This is gonna be Q3, this is gonna be my max, and that would mean that the min was the same as Q1, which is fine, that's great. All right, so now let's take a look at Germany because I think it's the next easier one to look at. I think China's is the funkiest. So I know the min is here. Right, I know here is Q1, I know the median is here, and this is the max, so that means median must have been equal to Q3. Okay, great. All right, now for China, this is the min and this is the max. So one of two things happened either the min was the same as Q1, was the same as the median, was the same as Q3, and then the max was over here. Or the other option, and I'm gonna erase this, the other option was that the min was solitary, just down here at zero, and then we had Q1, median, and Q3 were the same as the max. All right, so that there was, again, no middle 50% to box. There was no space between that. Personally, just based off of traveling, like how many countries folks travel to, I think it was the first option. I think that the min, Q1, median, and Q3 were all zero, that's what I think, and that the max was five. That's what I think is happening as we move through here. So based on that, you start to see my answer for A, all right? If all of the data is basically clumping on the left side and the right tail is the longer part, then this data is extremely skewed right, implying that the mean is larger than the median. And I, I said, I think, like I was just saying, min, Q1, median, and Q3 are all zero. And I put this little caveat here that it could be the case where Q1, median, Q3, and the max are all, ooh, this should all say are all the same. I will fix that boo-boo. Um, but I'm going to make the assumption that it's the first case. Uh, Germany's distribution is skewed left. And I would say skewed left because, again, if we look at this, here's the left tail. It's that long, right? And then here's the right tail. All right, and when I say left tail, I go from min to median, right? Lower 50% of my data, and then upper tail, median to max. All right, and you can see that the left tail is longer, so that's why I'm saying it's skewed left. 
All right, and then if we look at the US, right, there's the median to the max, that's a pretty long tail, versus the min to the median. So that one would actually be skewed right. And that, all of this shenanigans here, that's the S in socks, right? So that's me comparing the shape. So I would say that China's distribution was extremely skewed right, which is similar to um, the United States' distribution, whereas Germany's distribution was skewed left. Now for B, it says, have more Americans or more Germans surveyed been to over eight foreign countries? So now let's look at eight, all right? If we look at eight here, all I know is that 50% for Germany, right, have gone to eight or more countries. And I could say less than, I would even say less than 25%. All right, and I say 25% because, and I, excuse me, less than 25% because from Q3 to the max, that actually is 25%. And I'm not going that entire distance. So we're over half of Germany or the, the Germany students that were um, surveyed, over half of them went to eight or more countries. I know less than 25% of, and I shouldn't say students, I think these were just 20 year olds, excuse me. I know less than 25% of the US folks had done that. But if you look at the phrasing in part B, it just said have more Americans or more Germans. And that is a question about frequency. So when it says more Americans or more Germans, that is a frequency question. And I was not given info on frequency, right? If you take a look at all of this, this is relative frequency, relative frequency. So since I don't have that information, you see me saying it's not possible to answer that question. The question asks us to compare frequencies between Germany and the US, whereas the information we get from the box plot only allows us to compare relative frequencies. Okay, and that's part of box plots. We, we can't see that. I, I would need a sample size to be able to figure that out. All right, and this is just me talking about um, what I was saying, the over 50% versus less than 25%. And then it says compare the three box plots. So I can. All right, so for socks, you had the answer in part A. All right, no outliers were present. I, I'm going to assume, and let me clear this out just so we can see some stuff a little bit more clearly. I'm going to assume if outliers were present, they would have been shown. So since there's no isolated dots, I'm going to assume that there are no outliers, which is fine. I just want to take note of that. All right. So that's why I say no outliers were presented in the box plots. And then German 20-year-olds traveled more than Chinese or American 20-year-olds as their distribution, and you see this, has the largest median. So for center, I opted for median because we were given box plots, and you see me using comparative language. I'm not actually quoting the median for these three countries. I'm just saying Germany had the largest. Right? And then the next thing that I see is that in terms of spread, and I like to go with range, that the range of America and Germany is the same, where China had the smallest range. So again, I'm using comparative language as I move through this. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.